Hello, welcome to Citizens Forum. It is Wednesday, July the 3rd. I'd like to start by thanking the volunteer crew and the Shaw staff that makes this program happen every couple of weeks. My guest in the first uh, segment is Matt Hulse, and Matt is with the Green New Deal Victoria, which I hope is a great group. Matt, why don't you just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what the Green New Deal is. Sure, yeah, thanks for having me on here tonight. Um, uh, my name is Matt, as you said. I'm a lawyer in town. I practice Aboriginal law um, for a firm downtown. And the Green New Deal is, um, well, let's take it back to the 1930s when the Great Depression happened. Um, Roosevelt, uh, I believe, um, introduced the Green New Deal to dig America out of the Great Depression. A big investment of public money into public infrastructure to create jobs and to transition the economy out of, out of the doldrums. And what's happened now is we need a transition to a low carbon um, but equitable economy um, for tomorrow. And we're asking for a similar type of public investment into um, green new deal, into sorry, green new jobs that moves um, our resource dependent and uh, carbon intensive economy away from that towards something that's green, clean and, and uh, more sustainable. And it would, it, would be, it would lift all ships in a way. It would be in, intended to be a just transition for all workers so that everyone gets jobs. So retraining, um, universal ba basic in income, um, that type of thing. Yeah, the whole thing about pitting the environment against jobs is, is really a non-starter. That's not what, what anything has ever really been about. It's always profits versus jobs and the environment together. And so the Green New Deal wants to move us to a greener economy and also a more equitable economy. For sure. We're, I mean, we're not saying turn the taps off tomorrow on, on the oil. We need to transition away so that we, we develop an economy that is using our resources in the best way possible, value added to all the resources that we create, and ultimately a zero or zero, zero carbon future, um, which means you know, um, no net emissions. Yeah, and when we talk about zero carbon, I think um, many people, but not all, uh, would certainly agree that climate change is coming at us like a, like a rhinoceros and we've got to do something about it or we're just going to get trampled. Right, exactly. I mean, the international community has determined that we have about 11 years to reduce global emissions by 45%. Which as a, it is a significant amount of emissions reductions, which is, requires all hands on deck. And um, here in Canada, we need to do our part to address it, address it as much as anybody else, despite the fact that you know, we have um, uh, a relatively small proportion of emissions globally, we are still per capita the, amongst the highest emitters of carbon in the world. Yeah, and if, uh, I mean, as I look out the, the window here at the studio, all you see is cars going by and everybody's traveling and flying and using and consuming and wasting. And it won't be difficult to cut down a lot because we're such wasters. You know, and I certainly include myself when I say that, but we've just got to do better. We live in a system that's designed around fossil fuel use in the car, in the airplane, in how we trans get our food. And so there's many ways that we can transition um, away from high intensity carbon f uh, lifestyles to, to lower carbon stuff. That's gonna require changes in attitude and changes in behavior, but also include some innovations that will hopefully be spurred by investment from, from federal and provincial governments. Yeah. And in the end, I think we'll all be better off once we make the changes. We'll be a happier society. So a couple of weeks ago, there was a town hall uh, called a brainstorm, barnstorm? Barnstorm. Okay. Yeah. And it brought together, I guess, a couple of hundred people, and they went into different, uh, different groups, breakout groups, and covered a lot of different issues. So maybe you can tell us a bit about that. Sure. Um... I'm not sure though if I've, well let me just start by saying the Green New Deal is a vision for the economy and a few weeks ago before the barnstorm we identified what issues we want to see in that vision and now we're trying to implement that vision locally and some of the things that we touched upon were things like economic reform, um, electric vehicles, um, political pressure, uh, food security, 
um, immigrants and uh, anti-racism, migrant justice basically, uh, gender justice, um, divestment, um, a broad spectrum of topics um, which are designed to start identifying what actions that we can take here in the local Victoria region, the greater Victoria region, we can take in order to progress that, uh, that vision for a Green New Deal locally and be a, an example to others, but also just to start seeing real progress in the here and now. Now, when that first meeting happened, there were about 150 or 200 meetings across Canada, towns and cities right across Canada doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, so that, so was, that, that, was, the, yeah, that was the town hall, and, yeah. and that uh, created just what we want to see in a Green New Deal. And all those ideas went, to get, went towards a national organization called the Pact for the Green New Deal, who was outlining the vision for Canada. I haven't heard of that, so it's Pact? The Pact. For the Green just, New Deal, yeah, just and it's the pact. The pact, and okay. it, people can find that on. Uh, yeah, just search the pact, like a you know an agreement kind of thing. The pact for a Green New Deal, and um, it's a coalition of about seventy organizations, NGOs, labor unions, associations of doctors and, and other professionals that have decided that this is something that we want to work towards, and they are compiling all the ideas that we that the various town halls from across Canada developed. You know, I'm a little bit shocked that I, who attended one of the meetings and didn't, couldn't, couldn't go to the other, but I'm interested, haven't even heard of the pact. So I guess most other people haven't as well. Maybe that could have been a failure of our organization, not describing it properly, yeah. but um, it, it, it was something we presented to the, to the group just to make sure they knew what they were, what they were there for. Um, so then the barnstorm, which happened just the other week, end of, end of June, um, was to take those ideas that we came up with as that group of of folks up at the Fernwood Community Hall, um, take those ideas and start identifying how we could turn them into local actions. Okay. So what were some of the ideas to start to turn this into some kind of action? And I guess not only here, but provincially and federally. Yeah, um, so a couple of things. So we're still waiting for a lot of feedback from some of the facilitators for each of the breakout groups, but some, things, some of the groups that have got back to us already have said that was very successful and they got some good buy-in from the folks that, that attended. People are, are engaged and excited about this type of thing. So for political um, pressure, um, I think they list, identified a number of actions, um, editorial letters to, into the newspapers, identification of um, pulling together materials that they can start providing to candidates to say, hey, listen, this is a Green New Deal. What are you going to do about it? How, how are you aligned with this? Um, they even suggested developing all candidate meetings to talk about things like the Green New Deal um, to make sure that you know we're getting real face-to-face -face answers from political candidates about how they intend to address this. And to be, sh to be clear, the Green New Deal Victoria is a non-partisan group, so we're not affiliating with any single political party. We just want to hold all politicians of all stripes to account and understand what they want to do, what they're planning to do. Um, to respond to this problem. Well, to try to get politicians accountable, you've got to have power. Right now, the corporations seem to have the power and the politicians are accountable to them. Um, it's going to take a huge amount of work to, to change yeah. that particular thing. Um, there's a people's picnic coming up. This is being filmed on July the 3rd. There's a picnic, which is the next event that's going to be on July the 6th. Yeah. And that's at Beacon Hill Park, and yeah. what's that going to be? Is it more of a get-together, or is it a follow-up? Well, it's funny you mentioned about generating power, because this is the type of thing we're trying to do with the People's Picnic, in a sense. It's, the People's Picnic is a, is a meeting, is a, just a, a, a picnic, exactly, um, in Beacon Hill Park on our beautiful way near the, the play set. And uh, we're just going to get together, have a picnic, share some food, understand what each other people want from the, green, from the Green New Deal and then host a workshop about canvassing, how to canvass effectively and how to spread the message of the Green New Deal across town. Because what, we, what we're planning to do is get out, knock on doors and ask people to, to identify what they care about in a Green New Deal, what they'd like to see, how they'd like to see the economy turn around um, to benefit the environment and people. Um, and that's, we're trying to generate that people power so that when it comes to things like the election, but not just the election, in gen general, there's a host of other items that people can come out to show power, show to express their support for the Green New Deal. But for example, the election, we want them to roll into October being well informed about the Green New Deal and be ready to, to say, listen, liberal, conservative, NDP, 
green, what are you doing about the Green New Deal? We know, we know what we want, we know what it's going to take, and what are you going to do about it? So that's the power we're trying to de develop, and it starts with this people's picnic, uh, talk about how canvassing can uh, be rolled out. Well, I think that kind of outreach is definitely important. Um, I'd like to just talk for a moment about media coverage of the Green New Deal, because basically there hasn't been very much. If we, if we compare the coverage that Kawhi Leonard and the Toronto Raptors have gotten in the past few months, and compare that to what the Green New Deal has gotten in the past few months, and consider which one is really more important, mm -hmm. we can see that something is wrong. So do you have any strategy to pressure the media to start to cover this most important of all issues? A strategy is developing, but I will say I think we need, uh, we need champions. And I think if you look to America where they have their own version of the Green New Deal, they have a congresswoman, Alexandra Oscaro cortez if I've AOC. pronounced that, AOC, and she's a real champion for the Green New Deal. And I'm not suggesting we need a politician to front it here in Canada. That's not the only, the only way you can get the type of you know, drive we need. But I think you need champions. And it could be from industry. It could be local citizens. It could be from your faith institutions. It could be all those. It could be labor unions. And that could be one way. But starting here tonight at this type of you know, community television is a start. It gets the word out. And um, we just need to develop, develop traction. And once people get interested, I think they'll see benefit to hearing more about it. Okay. Um, can you just tell me a bit about um, what's happening nationwide, if you, if you even know, because this is a nationwide movement. For sure. I don't know too much, to be honest. The Pact for the Green New Deal won't be um, very active in the next few months as they lead up to the election, just right. to avoid contravening any, any election laws. Um, but the town halls are all taking, across the country, are all taking this forward in one, ex one extent or another. And all I can talk about is Victoria and what we're doing here in just identifying local actions that, um, that can we, we, can, we can mobilize on. Okay. Matt Hulse, thank you very much. We're out of time, but if you have any last words you'd like to say, maybe just people should get involved. How do, your, your email address is coming up? Email on, address uh, is coming up. Okay. Look, at, look out for us on, on Facebook with the Green New Deal, Green New Deal Victoria. And um, just, just check it out online. There's lots of material out there already. And uh, if you check out, you know, Facebook is a, is a definite place you can find us. And, um, and we'll post our uh, activities and updates on and, and what's going on. Okay. Matt, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum and maybe get involved if you're interested. Thank you.